I knew TCL was literally going big this year, but I didn't expect them to go this big. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and can we just take a second to appreciate how comically huge this box is? It's weird because we've reviewed 85 inch TVs before and the boxes were never this big. Not sure why it is this big or even how we're going to get the lid off this thing. I mean, we only have so much clearance here. Anyway, that's for me to worry about. What you need to know is that today we're unboxing, setting up and getting first impressions of the TCL R745, the first 85 inch model from the brand to come out. I feel like I've got my work cut out for me, so let's just get to it. Before we get into it, would you please share this video with anybody you know who's in the market for a TV? I think a lot of people don't know TCL makes an 85 inch model, so maybe that would be helpful for them. Also, while you're here, like and subscribe. We're trying to grow this channel and we need your help to do it. Also down in the description, we'll have shopping links to all the products that we cover in our videos. All right, let's bust this thing open. Here's everything that comes in the box. You've got a four piece deal for the stand. There are two legs, two feet. Uh, interestingly enough, the screws are already in the TV or in the uh, legs here. So we're gonna have to do some unscrewing before we start screwing. Then you got your power cable, a couple of Visa adapters, batteries, a Roku remote, and this piece of literature, which I would normally just slide away. Actually, you wanna keep this around because there's some helpful advice on how to assemble the TV in here. So here's how the stand goes. First, you gotta take the leg and up at the top, you've got two screws. Back those out and then you slot it into the foot. And there's only one way to do this, so you really can't screw it up. Once that's slotted in, you take the two screws and you put them back in, and then you have an assembled leg. Over to the back of the TV, we've got four screws on each side that need to come out. And when you take those screws out, a little plastic piece is gonna come out. That's gonna reveal the slots into which the leg goes, and then you just basically slot the leg in. It takes a little bit of doing, but once you get it in there, you've got eight screws to put in, and then you're done. Whew, that was a lot of work. Um, you know, the good news is this TV is packaged extremely well. It's a heavy TV, it needs the packaging to keep it safe, and I have no doubt that this TV will travel just fine. The downside of that is there is a ton of packing material. The box is huge. In fact, I think most folks, if they're gonna set this TV up themselves, are gonna have to do it outside of the home, maybe in the garage or something, and then just haul the TV in uh, because it's an involved process. Involved enough that I would say that if you can, have a professional come and do this. Two or three professionals come in and get this set up for you. And that goes doubly if you're gonna wall mount because it's a heavy TV, about 100 pounds, and you wanna make sure it's done correctly, all right? With that said, back of the TV shot, here we are. Um, it's a huge canvas, so you might notice a little bit of studio lighting. Not much we can do about that. Note that we have a five and a quarter inch driver right here, a speaker, so I'm expecting some good things from the sound quality on this TV. Also, we've got four HDMI inputs. None of them are HDMI 2.1. Uh, this TV does have some gaming chops. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The stand allows a lot of clearance, so there's gonna be room there for a sound bar if you're putting it on a stand, but look, the footprint is massively wide. This BDI corridor cabinet, well, it barely supports this TV in terms of its width. So you're gonna need a huge piece of furniture if you're gonna stand mount this thing. I think wall mount's really gonna be the way to go for most folks. Anyway, we've got quite a bit of plastic to remove, so let's get to it. And here we are, front of the TV shot, and obviously it towers over me. We've got a lot of vertical clearance with this TV and a lot of screen real estate too. Almost no bezels on the top or sides. You do get a pretty chunky aluminum strip along the bottom, TCL logo in the center, Roku on the right. Overall, the profile of the TV is about what I expected. It looks a lot like the 8 Series did a year, year and a half ago. So it's a little on the thick side, but you might expect that for a TV of this overall size. I'm really encouraged by what I see so far, so let's fire this thing up. So when the TV first comes on, you basically pair your remote, connect to the internet, and sit through a six minute update. Then you land here. From here, you enter your email address. It'll send you an activation link. Hopefully that email address is tied to your Roku account. It'll ask you if you wanna install a bunch of apps, and even if you skip it, you're still gonna end up getting a bunch of apps installed for you. So just go through the process, get it over with, and this is gonna take you another five or six minutes. 
Once that's done, you're gonna wanna turn on anything you've connected to your TV because the Roku platform is going to try and sense what that is and allow you to label each of your inputs. We've got just one thing connected, so uh, a Blu-ray player on HDMI 4 for now, and we're done. So now we're at the home screen, and the first thing I need to do, uh, because this TV is exceptionally bright and it's kind of freaking out our camera a little bit, is drop this down to normal, at least, for a start. That way we can now make a little camera adjustment and jump right back into it. Next, we need to do some picture settings. And this can be a little complicated, but I'll try and break it down as simply as possible. The weird thing about this TV is that you have to be playing content in order to make any adjustments to picture settings. So I'm gonna start an SDR title on Netflix. And keep in mind, I'm only adjusting Netflix right now. I don't think that I'm adjusting any of the other apps. Uh, when I go into this, we're in low power mode. Uh, we can change that to movie or normal. Normally I start with movie, but I noticed some uh, softening of the picture and some content earlier, so I wanna check that out. Uh, if we go down a little bit further into some of the other settings, we'll notice that at normal brightness, we're at backlight 40, and that seems about right. Warm color temperature, action smoothing is set to low. I'm gonna turn that off, action clarity to low. Uh, again, this is just my standard deal, folks, uh, when I get setting up with a TV. I'm also going to check out the uh, normal mode, which obviously is a lot brighter and a lot colder. Go into the picture settings there. We see the backlights up at 60, so much brighter in general. Color temperature is normal. I'm gonna bust that down to warm. Action smoothing is high. I'm gonna turn that off again. So a huge variance in the settings, and that's just for SDR. Let's see what Dolby Vision looks like. So I've pulled up a title in Dolby Vision. We'll go in here. TV brightness again at normal. Um, generally, I think normal is gonna be best for most folks. We're in a normal Dolby Vision mode. I have bright and dark available. And you can see that when we go to dark, everything warms up color temperature wise. Again, I might wanna do something similar in that I dig into both of these settings, uh, normalize them a little bit. Nice to see that action clarity and motion clarity are turned off for the uh, movie mode, at least for Dolby Vision. In terms of normal, much colder color temperature will warm that up. Action smoothing is at medium instead of high, that's interesting. I'll back both of those down. And yeah, I'm gonna bounce between these settings uh, when I start testing, and then of course, once I actually calibrate it, I'll probably have to obliterate a lot of this stuff. At any rate, those are the basics for SDR and Dolby Vision. Now let's do something for HDR. So I've popped into YouTube, loaded up an HDR title, press paused, and I go in and I'm interested to see that the picture mode is actually at dark HDR. I haven't selected that for anything else. Not sure why that might be. Let's go ahead and look at the settings there. Uh, warm color temperature, low action smoothing, low action clarity. Interesting that it would suggest that for me, having not loaded up a standard HDR before. I suppose we could also go into normal HDR and make some adjustments to that preset. Go down the color temperature, turn that to warm, action smoothing down to off, and off. Now, let's see if SDR carried over from our Netflix adjustments. All right, here's an SDR clip from YouTube. I wanna see if the adjustments I made, and they did, the adjustments I made from Netflix have carried over. So that's great news. Just know that you need to make the settings once in each of the modes, SDR, HDR, and Dolby Vision, and it should carry across to all your apps. Unfortunately, that does not carry over to your HDMI inputs, so you're gonna have to go into each of your HDMI inputs and make adjustments for SDR, HDR, and Dolby Vision. So, if I'm being honest, the Roku TV platform is a little hard to set up these days. I mean, it carries over a bunch of your app preferences, which is great, but you still have to log into all your apps, and then when it comes to making TV settings through the Roku TV platform, at least as implemented on TCL, there are a lot of steps. So not a huge fan of that, but once it's done, it's done. And then you can turn your attention to the TV. So first impressions, well, I would have to say that this TV is immensely powerful. It's not just the 85 inch screen. I think there's a lot of power in the backlighting system. I also think that contrast on this TV is gonna turn out to be pretty great, but that's not the whole story when it comes to picture quality. Plus, I've gotta test this thing to see how it handles that power that it has and where it puts the color in this situation. So the full review shall be really revealing, and that's gonna be coming up very soon. Thanks as always for watching, everyone. Hey, since movie theaters are basically closed, 
Would you consider an 85 inch TV suitable size to give you that cinematic experience or do you really need to go bigger than that? Let me know about that down in the comments. Please click like and subscribe and here's two other videos that I think you'll like.